welcome Khosh Ramadan to my kitchen. My name is Iman and today we'll be making Qabli Palau, which is one of my favorite dishes of all time and a hallmark of Afghan cooking. It's a meat broth based rice topped with seasoned sweet carrots slices, raisins, and sliced almonds. Of one rice is rice that you eat that each individual grain is separated, puffy, and elongated when it's cooked. And so there actually is an important differentiation between what brand of rice you buy because there are a hierarchy in terms of the grains that are provided in that bag and each rice brand is known for what quality of rice grains they provide you. This we'll be using Alwada rice. This is what I use in my kitchen and my mom has been using for the past more than 20 years. Well, actually, wow, almost 30 years now <laughs> since we've been in the States. Alwada is an Afghan brand. This particular brand I love because it is like a foolproof type of rice. If you are a novice at making rice, these grains will not let you down. Uh, whether I make it for just my husband and I at home or for a small family gathering of 100 people, which that actually does happen a lot with just my dad's side of the family since we have a big family. So what folks don't actually know is that Kabuli Palau has only been around um, across Afghanistan for the past century or so that it's been popularized. It originated in northern Afghanistan and then it spread to Kabul, the capital, where then it spread across the country. We're first going to soak and wash our rice. So now I'm going to prepare my lamb for the palau. This is so that we have lamb within the palau, which is what it's traditionally served with. First I'll begin by chopping my onion. to make my shredded carrots while my lamb is cooking before we make the rice. Traditionally, the carrots in Afghanistan are a lot sweeter than the carrots we have here in the States, so they don't actually add sugar. But because the carrots we have here available in the States are not as sweet, I have to add sugar. So I had let this steam for six minutes. I'm gonna turn off the heat. As you can see, the water has evaporated and it's just the oil that is remaining. That's it. I'm just going to leave it like this until the rice is ready. Now it's time to boil the rice. What I've done is taken kind of a wider pot. I have the exhaust off, but you should have it on. I filled it with a little bit of water. I'm taking my rice that we've soaked and I'm going to take it out like so. Add, in. add enough water just to cover the rice. There we go. And I'll let this boil until the rice grains are halfway cooked. So I've now let the rice boil for about eight minutes. And what I do to see if it's parboiled, as they call it, is look and see here. Do these feel slightly soft but hard at the same time when you touch? See these little marks that look like stripes? That's when you know it's parboiled. So we'll just turn this off from the heat and strain it. We're gonna put the rice into the colander using cold water. Rinse out the remainder of the rice. The reason we do this is the cold water will wash off the starch of your rice and make sure that your greens don't stick together. First, add your salt and your palau spice. What you want to do is make sure that your rice is thoroughly covered by the broth and spice. I'm going to gently fold this throughout. We're using the soft method. Soft is that straining method to cook. And in the soft method, you parboil your rice 
and then you are going to steam it the remainder of the way through. You see that this has the color. All right, now we're gonna go to our pot. I'm gonna just open up the lamb and transfer this into the bottom of the pot without its water. And I'm gonna add a quarter cup of oil to the bottom of my pot because I don't want it to stick. All right, so why did I put this in a bowl instead of right back into the pot to just mix it that way? Well, I wanted to make sure that it doesn't have too much water in here because I don't want there to be so much water that my rice will become mushy. There should only be about a half centimeter of liquid at the bottom of your pot. And if you are able to cook with a red meat with its bone, it will taste way juicier than without the bone. My dad kind of jokes and we all sort of fight over the bones in our family. Who's gonna get the bone marrow? Because it's super tasty. So now we're gonna create the holes in here to allow for steaming. I'm pushing aside some of that. And you can see there's more than, I'm gonna make, let's see, four holes total. And there's definitely, I'm putting my stick in the end of this ladle to see to what level does it reach. And it reaches about here, which is a bit more water than I want. So what I'll do first is turn this onto high heat, have some of that water evaporate out, and then close the lid um, to have it steam. You can now see that the water has evaporated down. I'm turning that off. Take a kitchen towel, a clean one, wrap the inside of my lid with this kitchen towel on top of the rice so it steams. Okay, now we're gonna assemble my rice. We are gonna use the steamed carrots from before and raisins. What you wanna make sure is when we're assembling, you put your carrots on one side and your raisins on another. If the raisins are touching the carrots, they will discolor the carrots and ruin your dish. Why am I steaming it with the rice? Is really to get the, the flavors of the carrot and raisins infused into the rice as it does this last part of steaming. What you want to be sure to do is while your rice is steaming, do not be tempted to open the lid. If you open the lid, you're going to ruin the steaming process and you might have broken grains. I love Kobli Palau. My parents um, actually <laughs> protested after we did years. Again, don't forget the towel onto the lid. Uh, after we did years of a traditional American Thanksgiving dinner of turkey and things like that, my mom confessed, she's like, guys, I love your mac and cheese and your mashed potatoes and all of that. And no matter how much turkey I eat, I cannot get full because there's no palau on the table. We've had our palau cook and I'm just gonna now show you how to plate it. Ooh, look at that steam, my God. You can really actually smell the infusion of these carrots and raisins. Look at these raisins and how fluffy they got. That's the power of the steaming. I'm separating the rice now. Throw my rice back on top. And I'm just gonna take the carrots and raisins now, drizzle them on top. I think my mom would approve. I'm gonna do this the old school way and try a little bit with my hands here. From the, just the corner, don't tell anyone. Oh my God. It was literally perfection. I love Kabbali Palau because how it captures the essence of the central spices really that are used in a lot of the different dishes into one dish. This is such a flavorful rice. And I hope you enjoy this. Let me know how you like Kabbali Palau. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. I loved cooking with you all today and I really look forward to seeing you back in my kitchen. Let me know what you wanna to make together. Bye.